AI tools are so hot these days, you ever want to try to access them programmatically, but not in the typical programmatic way they show you, like with a RESTful web service or using Python. I want to access tools like ChatGPT here in Java. Now there's a whole bunch of reasons, but rather than get into that, let's just dive right in and we'll talk about the reasons later. So this is the home page for the Open API platform. It's at platform.openapi.com. And if I go down to GPT here, for example, this is the one I want to access, they give you a bunch of things you could use this for programmatically to draft documents or write code or answer questions, et cetera, et cetera. I don't think anybody needs to be persuaded anymore as to what you can use GPT-4 for. Now, in order to access this programmatically, the first thing you actually have to do is create an account and set up a key. Now, in my section here, if I go to the View API Keys, you'll see that I have, in fact, registered, and you can generate a new secret key here. This one called My Test Key or whatever was generated back in June. I don't belong to any particular organization, and I can copy this and use it wherever I need to. Now, you also have to set up billing with a payment method. They claim, if you look at some of the documentation, that you don't actually need to pay anything, that there is a free tier. Yeah, that's long gone. If it, if it was ever there at all, it, it's not there anymore. You do have to put in a credit card. But this charges by usage. So it's not like there's a monthly fee or anything like using real GPT-4 or anything like that. It's all pay as you go and the prices are very low if you're just doing development stuff. Probably a lot higher in production, but that's not my problem. I just want to show how to build this thing. You can set a, um, a limit to how, how much the maximum charge per month will be or whatever. So what I want to do is go to the API reference because now that we have a key, we're going to need to pass that key as part of the authentication. We're not going to use NPM or PIP. Instead, we're simply going to use something, the Java equivalent of doing this curl API. In fact, if you are looking at any AI tool, look for the REST API implementation because that's what we're going to model with the latest features in Java, like records and sealed interfaces and all the nice stuff. So this one says we could send a simple GET request to models here using our authorization with our API key, and we don't need that organization if we don't want. And if I go down to the model section, you'll see let me skip to the list models here. There's a GET request to this base URL, and here's what the response looks like. So we get a JSON object that has an object in it that says list. That's not really all that useful to us. And then the data is an array of individual JSON objects with ID, object created, and owned by. Now that object is always model. So again, I'm not exactly sure why we care. Here's the formal definitions. This. Now I'm going to use IntelliJ IDEA for this and in the next couple of videos as well, just to build up this, this system. Before I dive into the project itself, let me highlight a couple of plugins I have here. I am using GitHub Copilot. That does a lot of auto-completion for me. will suggest all kinds of things. All I have to do is give it a comment or a little bit of a suggestion as to where I'm going. and It'll generate a lot of code for me. And the other thing I have in here is the AI Assistant that comes in the latest release or beta versions of JetBrains. IntelliJ idea. So I really like this and it's very, very useful. It's basically, again, GPT trained on code somehow and it understands how to do that. It feels mildly distasteful using AI tools to generate code to access AI tools. It's kind of like, you know, feeding a cow hamburgers. You know, it's mildly distasteful, but what the heck. All right, let's make a new project. And I'm going to call this. Open AI. I am going to use Java for my code here. I'll stick with Gradle for the moment using, sure, the Kotlin DSL. That's perfectly fine. Don't need any sample code. And here is the project that was generated. Uh, we're using the Java plugin. There's the group and the version, downloading everything from Maven Central and using JUnify for the test. Again, nothing unusual here. Now, 
for when you're going to access one of these APIs via its REST API, I need two things. I need an HTTP client and I need a JSON parser, something that can parse and generate JavaScript object notation from Java to and from Java. Starting in Java 11, Java's got an HTTP client built right in, which is really nice. I'll just stick with that for the time being, even though there are other ones out there, many open source HTTP tools that are excellent. There's no problem there at all. Java still does not have a JSON parser. For the moment, I will use Google's JSON. Okay, I set up our project, and what I've changed is I added Google's JSON, because I know I'm going to need that at some point. I added SLF for J just so I could do some logging if necessary. I did upgrade the JUnit 5 implementation to 5.9.2, the current version, but that's it. Everything else is just going to be straight Java library. Okay, now let's go ahead and start this up. And I'm going to do this in the simplest possible way, and then we'll make it a little bit more interesting. The first thing I've done is set up the base URL. Now we're going to, in this particular video, we're just going to access the models. In the next video, we'll get into the chat API in more detail. Later, we'll talk about the Whisper API and so on. Also, what I did is I set up my key as a system property. That seems to be the easiest way to go about it for me. That way, I can use system.getEnv, which gets the value of a specified environment variable, and it's a system-dependent external name variable, and once it finds that, then we'll be good to go. I'm going to do things for the moment inside the main method just to keep it simple, but then we'll refactor that into actual details. Now, the first step is to set up the HTTP client. Let me take care of that now. Okay, so in order to create the client, I'm using the factory method, new HTTP client, that will set everything up with the default. I am setting my header here to use that open AI key with that bear, the syntax that we're showing on the other page, and the content type is JSON. Now, I actually don't need to say get, that is the default, but it doesn't hurt to point out that we're doing a get request. Simplest thing to do is to just get back the data as a string and print it, and then we'll map it to something more interesting. So let me set that up. Okay, so now what you see is I'm using the send method off the HTTP client to pass that request. And I'm saying, take the body of whatever comes back and just give me the string version of it. And inside that HTTP response is a status code and other headers, but I'm just going to print the body. And this is my proof of concept that I'm able to get there at all. So let me run this one. And there you see we have it. If I scroll to the top of this, you see there are a lot of models here. I got back a JSON object, and again, it's a list. I mean, that's not terribly informative. There's an element called data, which is an array of all of these, quote, model objects that also include permission. So this is way more complicated than what we're seeing over here. Here we're just seeing data as ID object created and owned by, and here we're getting a lot more information than that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to now say, let's talk to the AI assistant and say, all right, here's what I want to do. So I open up the AI assistant and I say, uh, here is a sample response to a request for models. Please generate Java records to map to it. Quote, quote, quote. I put in carriage return here. And let me copy this. And I'll paste it in. And now hit Enter. Now, this is this is where you have to start using your judgment. Yeah, the model has the ID, the string object, which we don't really care about because that's going to be always going to be the word model. That's not helpful. The ID is where the actually good part is going to be. So also on model response, I'm not sure I would call it that. 
Uh, if we leave out the object, then we can just call this a model list, for example. Now, easiest of all would be to just go in here and say, yeah, paste that code in. And now I can modify it the way I want. So let me take this out. And in fact, I want this to be model list. And I'm going to take out that object. And here's something that I find kind of easy myself. Rather than have them as separate records, I'm actually going to take the model and add it inside the model list because it really makes it easy to follow what's going on in the overall model. So there's my list of model. There's the model with the ID, the created by, and the owned by. And we're basically done, believe it or not. Now, I do need my JSON object, so let me go ahead and set that up as well. Uh, private final JSON, JSON equals. Now, I do want to make one change here. GitHub Copilot is suggesting that I just instantiate JSON and use it as is. And I could do that. But I want to point something out. If you look back here, you'll see I've got underscores here, like an owned by. Whereas in my model, I could use the underscores, but that's not typical Java. Java likes camel case. So let me show you the properties I would set up in order to make that work instead. Okay, so here you see I'm using a JSON builder and setting the field naming policy to be lowercase with underscores, and that will automatically convert to camel case for what we need. So there, now I've got JSON ready to go. I've got the model list, which has the model in it. So now down here, instead of just printing the body, what I could do instead is say, all right, ah, so I'm ready to go, except that now I'm running into the problem. I'm using the main method. It's time to extract this stuff into an actual class. OK, so you can see now my list models method has the client, the builder in here with the authorization, the get request, get back the string, convert it to a model list. And now I can do this. I could say model list data dot for each let's just print it and then we'll be good now I could normally I make a test for this in order to drive it but right now I've still got my main method so might as well do it there and what you see is I have a whole series of models like this each with an ID and a created and an open owned by and they're all owned by either OpenAI or OpenAI-Dev. And even though the only ones I'm really interested in are the chat GPT ones at the moment, simple enough to put this together. Now, I could go on and do the chat one, but this video is getting a little bit long. So instead, what I'm going to do is make a couple modifications to this. So for example, what might be nice is to deal with that date and time issue. So you see that what's coming back is created, and it's a it's an integer. So I'm going to go back to OpenAI here and say, how do I convert to a local date, actually a local date time? So you can see that the AI assistant said, oh, here's the code to convert a timestamp into a local date time. There. So here's the idea. I've got my model, my ID, my created, which will be the local date time of instant, instant of epic second created with the system default and then the owned by. And there's everything. And now I actually have the a print of the model. Let me run that. And you see now the model's being printed with a timestamp. The all the created strings are when they were done. The problem now is the ordering isn't really helpful to me. I think I will order them in descending order by the, by the created time. That's where I can take advantage of the fact that data here includes a list. So let me make that a stream, which I will sort using, using comparator.comparing by the model created property in reverse order. 
And that's where I'll print them out. And let's take a look at that. And look how much nicer that is. They're in descending order by create date. The latest one, the GPT 3.5 Turbo here, dates from June 12th of this year. Now the next step, and the last step I want to do on this video, is I'm going to extract this record into a file of its own. There, now I have the model list inside here. I go back and delete it from the OpenAI one. Let's get rid of all the unused imports. Let's run it one more time to make sure everything is fine. Yep, all seems to be good. In the next video, when we resume, we'll build on this system and access the actual ChatGPT mechanism. See you soon.